Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Brad Mussel, and this is a reading of the Utility of Religion, Mill, Nietzsche, and James. This is going to be Section A of Part 3 of Chapter 1, John Stuart Mill and the Utility of Religion. Again, this is Part 3, Religion and Personal Happiness, Section A, The Case for Supernatural Religions as a Source of Personal Happiness. After spending the first part of his essay trying to show that religion has very little social utility, Mill moves on to consider whether it nevertheless pr proves useful for individuals. He begins this portion of his analysis by investigating the psychological nature of religious belief, speculating about its origin and evolution in the process. Subsequently, he demarcates two psychological benefits that supernatural religions offer individuals, and then questions whether these religions are nonetheless necessary and or optimal for securing such benefits. Mill ultimately argues that super, supernatural religions are neither necessary nor optimal for acquiring these benefits, and in doing so, he builds a case for his alternative, the religion of humanity. In this part of the chapter, I delve into each of these aspects of his analysis, beginning with an account of why Mill believes that supernatural religion can aid individuals in their pursuit of happiness, section A, and concluding with accounts of why he thinks it is nonetheless not necessary, section B, or optimal, section C, for doing so. Mill begins by asking, quote, what is it in human nature which causes it to require a, re a religion? What wants of the human mind religion supplies and what quality it develops? End quote. Footnote 136 cites the source. Mill answers that religion originated with belief in God, which, according to him, could be universally and, quote, rationally explained from the spontaneous tendency of the mind to attribute life and volition, similar to what it feels in itself, to all natural objects and phenomena which appear to be self-moving. End quote. Footnote 137 cites the source. Then, after increased recognition of universal patterns and the multitude of scientific laws underlying the universe, quote, the transition was made to supposing that the object present to the, present to the senses was inanimate, but was the creature an instrument of an invisible being with a form and organ similar to the human, end quote. Footnote 138 cites the source. With this, Mill explains how religion evolved to its modern-day form. Monotheistic religions like Christianity, Judaism, and Islam posit this kind of anthropomorphic deity. Having characterized the origin and evolution of religious belief, Mill proceeds to try to explain its lo longevity. One reason why Mill thinks religion has been such a mainstay throughout human history is because it satiates our existential curiosity. Accordingly, he alludes to, quote, the small limits of man's certain knowledge and the boundlessness of his desire to know, end quote. Footnote 139 cites the source. Our short-lived existence on earth is a mystery that we all naturally, at one time or another, wish to solve. And Mill claims that religion, like poetry, helps satisfy this wish insofar as it allows us to entertain, quote, ideal conceptions grander and more beautiful than we see realized in the prose of human life. End quote. Footnote 140 cites the source. As a result, religion is thought to assuage the existential anxiety that we find accompanying our finite knowledge and existence. Like poetry, religion allows us to imagine greater possibilities and to escape the everyday malaise of our everyday life, or sorry, of our earthly life. However, religion is distingu distinguished from poetry and that it, quote, is the product of the craving to know whether these imaginative concepts, conceptions have realities answering to them in some other world than ours, end quote. And as opposed to poetry, religion entails, quote, positive belief and expectation, end quote, that these ideal ruminations bear some truth. Footnote 141 cites the source. Subsequently, in addition to satisfying existential curiosity, Mill hints at another reason why Supernatural religion has been so prominent throughout history. It offers a sense of redemption, of atonement for the hardships we suffer here on earth by way of its supernatural ideals. As Mill suggests, quote, so long as earthly life is full of suffering, so long there will be need 
of consolation, which the hope of heaven affords to the selfish, the love of God to the tender and grateful. End quote. Footnote 142 cites the source. In the afterlife, promised by many religions, quote, each hopes to find the good which he has failed to find on earth. End quote. Footnote 143 cites the source. There is no question that Mill thinks that thinks these desires for existential answers for, and for a sense of atonement inherent in our human nature prove to be powerful psychological forces which in turn inspire and explain the religious belief we find to be so widespread. Religions are thought to be beneficial for individuals insofar as they satisfy, satisfy these psychological desires. Footnote 144. As we will see in chapter 3, this is one of James James's central tenets in the varieties of religious experience. End of footnote 144. After offering this psychological analysis of religious belief, wherein he ex explicates how religion fulfills these two basic desires, Mill then explicitly ex speaks to its usefulness for individuals. He clearly suggests that religion is beneficial for individuals, writing, quote, the value Therefore, of religion to the individual, both in the past and present, as a source of personal satisfaction and of elevated feelings, is not to be disputed, end quote. Footnote 145 cites the source. Hence, by satisfying the psychological needs of individuals, religion is thought to make them happier. However, immediately after acknowledging that supernatural religions can provide pers personal satisfaction for, by way of these exalted feelings, Mill reveals the rub. Quote, it has still to be considered whether in order to obtain this good, it is necessary to travel beyond the boundaries of the world which we inhabit. End quote. Footnote 146 cites the source. Granting that supernatural religions yield this benefit, no questions whether they are, one, necessary, and two, optimal for the acquisition of it. To this end, he establishes the existence of other alternatives, most notably his own religion of humanity. And thus he argues that these supernatural religions are not necessary for the sake of personal happiness. That is, that there are other means by which to satisfy our psychological needs and more generally, to make us happy. Then he expounds on the detriments of supernatural religions, which suggests that they are not optimal for such purposes either. I now consider each of these points in more detail. So again, that was Section A of Part 3 of Chapter 1 of John Stuart Mill and Utility of Religion from the Utility of Religion, Mill, Nietzsche, and James.